Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for any of your thoughts. Tomorrow is Halloween, finally at last, and I'm so excited for it. So I thought that I could celebrate with you guys with a short and spooky tag that I saw on Kristen's channel, Wuthering Reader. I will leave the link to her channel down below. Definitely go and check her out because she is awesome. There are four questions to this tag and I will add a fifth bonus question you will figure out why at the end of the tag, but also to step on my game a little bit, I will answer to these questions with books that are perfect for this time of the year or that are Halloween themed somehow. So without further ado, let's go with the Halloween book tag. Just a quick note, I will not give you the synopsis of these books because otherwise it would take too long. I will just tell you why I chose these books for these questions, but if you want to know more about them, I will leave the link to these books in the description down below, or you could always ask me in the comments and I will tell you gladly. Trick or Treat, where Trick is a book that you thought you would love but ended up hating, and Treat is a book that you thought you would hate but ended up loving. My trick is Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I thought I had a love-hate relationship with Neil Gaiman, but it turns out that I have just a hate relationship with Neil Gaiman. I like his writing style and how he has a unique, peculiar and very recognizable voice in telling his stories, but I don't like the story itself. It happened in Coraline, it happened in Stardust, it happened a couple of weeks ago when I listened to The Ocean at the End of the Lane. He builds up these incredible, amazing fantasy worlds, but it's like stuff just randomly happens and pops up, but nothing is explained, so it's like he is making the stuff up as he goes along without having a reason for that thing to happen. And the fact that just drives me insane is that the characters in the book, the children usually, the main protagonists, ask to the other characters that are more involved in that fantasy world, and those characters refuse to answer. So you have the question that's being asked, but you don't get the answer, but you have this random stuff happening all the same, and I just hate it. I want a reason, I want an explanation, and I never get that in Neil Gaiman's books, and I just hate it, so I think I might have to finally surrender to the hard truth, which is Neil Gaiman is not for me. But my treat is, lo and behold, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I told you about this book in my September wrap-up, so if you want to know more, I will leave it in the description down below. But long story short, this is a mystery novel where a character who doesn't remember anything about himself or his past wakes up and he has eight days to figure out who is behind the murder of Evelyn Hardcastle, and each day he will wake up in a different character's body. I didn't I didn't think I was going to hate this book, but I just thought it was going to be an ordinary book, an okay book, just to pass the time and listen to it while running. But I realized that the more I went on, the more I did not want to stop listening to it because the story is just so well built and construed and the characters are so well depicted, I thought I knew them. And it was just so intriguing and addicting and I could not just, I, it was incredible and it's one of my favorite books of this year and I just loved it. And so if you can, just embark on this journey because you will not regret it. Creatures of the Night, a character that you would never want to meet. The character that I'm going with for this question is without a doubt the villain of the story that I'm currently listening to, The Diviners by Liba Bray. This character is Naughty John and he is the ghost of a madman who lived in the second half of the 19th century and he was the son of the preacher of this cult, of these brethren. And it is, he is creepy and scary as hell, specifically because every time he appears and he commits a murder because there are, you know, several ritual offerings, I will not go into details, but every time he appears, he whistles and sings this creepy song. I don't remember all of it, thank God, but it goes something like this. It says, Naughty John, Naughty John, does he work with his apron on? 
and he goes on with blood and uh, it's just so creepy and in the audiobook the narrator sings this song with such a creepy voice that it gives me goosebumps and it, it's just creepy as hell, so definitely Naughty John. The Dracula of Books, a book that drains you. Now, I guess you could interpret this question in two different ways. You could either choose a book that tires you because it's just so boring that you cannot take it anymore, or a book that was just so emotionally involving that you have no feels whatsoever left. And I went with this interpretation, so I decided to choose A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. I distinctly remember the moment in which I finished reading this book. I was in class, which was the worst place I could have chosen to read this book. Because as soon as it ended, I started bawling like there was no tomorrow. I was in a class, but I didn't care and I just kept crying because it was too intense and too sad but too beautiful. It was just so much to take but I did not regret anything at all about it. And it is sad but it is also creepy because there are these dark beautiful illustrations throughout the book that perfectly complement the prose. It was just incredible. If you have not read A Monster Calls yet, what the fuck are you waiting for? The Frankenstein of Books, a book with different elements that perfectly work together. Once again, you could choose a book with different writing styles, a book with different characters, a book with different formats. I went with the latter and the book I thought about is The Devil and Winnie Flynn by Michael Osto. This is a YA, but it doesn't really feel like a YA. I think that anyone could read it and really, really enjoy it. It is a book that uses different formats because you have your normal, typical prose, but you also have interviews and scripts and weird pictures and illustrations. And that is because this book is about a girl who loses her mom and she goes to live with her aunt for a while and her aunt is a TV producer of a show that deals with ghosts and paranormal activities and they're following the devil of New Jersey so it experiments with all the formats that you would have in a TV show and it was just so creepy a lot of twists and turns that I did not see coming and because of all these different formats it's a pretty quick read so if you don't know how to spend your Halloween day, there you go. And here we get to my bonus question, Howls in the Wind, a spooky audiobook. I could not end this video without mentioning a couple of audiobooks since I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately, so I'm going to give you just a bunch and you can pick and choose your favorite. The first one is The Darkness of Sunny Point by Shelley Scaro. This is an Audible original and I think it's four or five hours long, so it's pretty short and you can listen to it in a day. Halloween once again. It is YA, but it's creepy for real. Like, this is legit scary because there's no book, okay? This is just an audiobook. It's an audible production. So they used noises in the backgrounds and special effects and sounds and noises. So you can hear the door screeching. You can hear the wind howling. You can hear the crows calling. It's just so creepy. And there are different narrators for different characters, so it's just a very, it's a very engaging story that will creep you out, I can assure you. Another audiobook is, again, The Diviners by Liba Bray, because the narrator, January Lavoy, she's brilliant. She's just brilliant. It's just her. One narrator, but she does different voices, she sings in different voices, and it Oh my god, she gives me the creeps. She's incredible. Once again, absolutely recommended. Also, if you want a classic, you can listen to The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. It's kind of your typical Halloween book. I didn't particularly enjoy 
the story, how it was written, but you have the perfect fall setting. You have colored leaves, you have wind, you have, you know, creepy houses, you have kids that are in danger and that are disappearing. They embark on adventures, you have death and how it is seen and celebrated in different cultures, so definitely very interesting. You could listen to the audiobooks of uh, Sherlock Holmes, narrated by Stephen Fry, he's freaking incredible and, you know, a nice murder to solve might cheer you up on Halloween. Earlier today, my pal Jack Lantern right here forgot to tag people, and what kind of tag is it? If you don't tag people, it ain't right. I'm going to make up for his mistake right now and tag some people. Adrian Dalton at Stripped Cover Lit. I'm not sure you guys will do this because you have so many ideas for videos and honestly, I have no idea how you do that. But since you have lost your hard drive and I'm, I'm sorry for smiling, that's a terrible thing. But since you have lost it, you might need more material for more videos. And here I am tagging you. Juan at Just One Reader because I think that he likes doing tags and I love watching his tags so that would make everyone involved very happy. Xenia at Of Books and Men because I love how she talks about books and I love watching her videos and I really would like to see her take on this one. Mei Cho because she does such creative videos and I love watching them but she hasn't done one in a while and I miss her on booktube so perhaps this will prompt her return because I miss your videos so please come back. The book Bella because we have very similar tastes and so I would like to see what books she chooses for this tag. And last but not least, Erica at The Perks of Books because she's filming a bunch of videos for Halloween and she likes scary, creepy things, so I think she might like to do this tag as well. And this is it for this video. I hope it was creepy and spooky enough for you guys. But yeah, this is it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please let me know, as always, in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you would like to, if you have any recommendations, or you could also answer to these questions in the comments down below. I would love to talk to you guys. I wish you all a creepy and spooky and exciting Halloween, and I'll see you soon with another video. Spooky hugs.